This video shows basic navigation and general use of the DriveWorks EZ10 software. We will start a project, overview some of the basic function blocks, and create a simple widget machine program together. Let's start by opening up DriveWorks EZ. Feel free to follow along during the video or try the exercise on your own after viewing. If you do follow along, it is recommended that you are running two monitors, one for DriveWorks EZ and another for this video. The first thing we must do is start a new project. Simply click the new icon and start a new project. I'm going to name this test project. Use your drop down selections to pick out your drive series and your platform, which can be found using monitor U818 of the drive you are connecting to. If you can't view the U8 monitors, make sure that A107 has DriveWorks EZ enabled. You could go one step further and tag the project with some properties. This would be useful if you have multiple DriveWorks EZ programs and multiple machines at your company. Click OK once you are done. When we started our new project, DriveWorks EZ automatically created a project page called Page 1. If you wish, you can rename the page by double clicking on Page 1. Now we can drag and drop function blocks onto our project page. If we accidentally add a block and then wish to remove it, we can simply highlight the block and press the delete key. There are two types of connections a block can have. The first type is a numeric connection. Numeric connections are ones which will only take in or put out a numerical value, usually a percentage. The other type of connection is a logic type connection. These connections can only be true or false. Numeric output connections will only connect to numeric input connections, and logic output connections will only connect to logic input connections. You can see that logic block connections are a bit triangular, while numeric blocks are rounded. Let's take a couple of minutes to overview some, but not all, of the available block categories. On the left side of the DriveWorks Easy user interface, you will find all of the available function blocks neatly organized into a few categories. Let's look at the Drive I.O. category. Here you will find blocks representing all of the drive's standard analog and digital inputs, as well as the pulse train input and digital outputs. Use these blocks whenever you would like to integrate the functionality of DriveWorks EZ with the physical world. Analog, digital, and pulse train blocks are commonly a good starting point for most projects. You can stay on the Drive I.O. heading to see all of the blocks, or you can expand the heading and just view the different types of I.O. in their individual groups. This will be true of all the block groups. Skipping over the Drive Option Board I.O. category, we come to the Drive Monitors. There is both numeric type monitor blocks and logic type. These are easily differentiated by how the blocks look. The ones that look like an analog gauge and have the rounded output are numeric monitors. The green on blocks are logic blocks, again meaning that they are either true or false during the described condition. The next category is pretty important. Under the Drive Commands tab, you will see some of the most essential drive commands. Frequency command is your frequency reference. Torque command is the drive's torque reference command, and the ACK deck block can be used to modify your acceleration and deceleration rates. You can also see that we have the forward and reverse run commands available to us here as well. If you want to know the particulars of how any DriveWorks Easy function block operates, the DriveWorks Easy help file, which is in effect the manual for the software, can be accessed by clicking on the question mark symbol at the top left of the DriveWorks Easy interface. Even easier than clicking the question mark is to right click on the function block itself and select the more about the XXX block. While we have this help file open, let's look at a few other things. You can search the help file by clicking the search tab and then typing what you are looking for help on. If I type in flip-flop, I get a list of all pages of the help file that contain the words flip-flop. If I select one of the three set reset flip-flops, I am taken to a page with the I.O. for the specific function block, along with a truth table listing what the output will be depending on what the states, the set, and the reset inputs are. It is also important to know that there are programming rules that apply when using function blocks. These six rules have their own entry listed on the contents tab of the help file. 
Some of the block rules will be automatically corrected by the program itself. Others will result in errors when compiling the program. So it is important to review and understand the rules. The first rule is the output of one block cannot be connected to the input of a block prior in the sequence. So we can't take the output of this block and connect it back to the input of a block earlier in that same rung. Another rule is that numeric outputs can only be connected to numeric inputs and the same for logic outputs and inputs. You can't mix and match them because the program actually won't even let you do that. You'll see that you won't be able to make a connection between the two before you even get a chance to compile. Some function blocks can be used multiple times while others can be used only once per project. It is just a case-by-case -case basis. If you right-click and select block help for a given function block, you'll see in the description whether you could use it more than one time or not. Any block that creates a drive command can only be used once, so that means you can't have multiple frequency commands, multiple run commands, for example. Function block outputs cannot be connected to both inputs of the same type of function block. So this one's a little bit confusing to understand if you just read it, but if you look at these pictures, there's the correct and the incorrect way to do it. You can't have two add blocks be the inputs to a third add block. You'd have to use a temporary register in place of one of the ad blocks feeding into the third ad block. And the last rule is that the output of any block can be connected to multiple output blocks, but can only be connected to one operation block. Again, the workaround is the use of temporary reads and writes to achieve your objective without breaking the rule. All right, so back to some more function blocks. There are nearly 300 available blocks total. This training is meant to just provide the foundation so you can proceed to experiment with function blocks and programs at your own learning pace. Knowing that, let's briefly scan through the digital and numeric function categories. Digital functions will contain all of your basic digital logic gates. Hopefully these block types should seem familiar. So if we go ahead and drag the AND block into our project, then we can right click it to see the block help. Notice that all of the digital gate blocks are listed. Within the description of the AND block, there is a truth table. If we look at the table for the AND gate, we can see that the output will only go true when both input A and B are true at the same time. There's also an AND3 gate, which will only go true if all three inputs are true. There are also NAND, OR, OR3, NOR, XOR, and NOT functions available. Coming up shortly in this video, we will do an application example together, and it will begin to make sense how you can apply these blocks. Numeric functions will take numerical inputs and produce a numerical output. For example, I can use the add block to add two analog inputs together. A sum block will output the sum of the three numerical inputs. The sub block will output the difference of the top input minus the lower. There are a couple of ways to multiply and divide inputs. Make a value an absolute value, scale a value, filter it, ramp it, limit it. These are all at your disposal in the numeric function tab. Some of the function blocks listed under the numeric function heading will actually include logic inputs to the blocks as well. So now we should know enough to make a simple DriveWorks EZ program. Let's go through an exercise together to get our feet wet. We will read through and perform the steps required to make the requested program. It is recommended to follow along by creating your own project using the Escawa DriveWorks EZ online demo unit. For these exercises and application stories, you need to download the application guide from this class's webpage. By downloading this guide, which is a PDF, it will make your life a bit easier so you won't need to pause the video and copy down all the application requirements for each story. I will read through and perform the steps required to make the requested program. Please feel free, as it is highly encouraged, to follow along on your own PC. Create a new project for a GA500 called Exercise 1 and include your name and company name with the project. We will use the blocks we've described so far, the ones we've talked about in this video series, to accomplish the following. We want two digital inputs. We will be using terminals DI6 and DI7. Terminal DI6 will be designated as a run, and Terminal DI7 will be designated as a run prohibit. The drive will only run if Terminal DI6 is closed and Terminal DI7 is open. That will handle our run. Second step will be two analog inputs added together. 
we'll use AI1 and AI2, which will become our frequency reference. We'll have to make sure that AI2 is changed from 4 to 20 milliamps to 0 to 10 volts DC. After we create our program, we'll have to successfully compile the program and download it to our drive if we have one. Also, if you do have an actual drive, after we finish the program, we can try running the drive while monitoring the program with the DriveWorks PC tool. All right, so let's resolve this one. So I'm going to open up DriveWorks EZ, start a new project, call this one Exercise 1, and it will automatically set the page name to Page 1. My two digital input terminals, DI6 and DI7, will be under the Drive I.O. tab. A nice feature is that when we drag the blocks on the screen, there's a text box available underneath each block where we can add a name. As it says in the application guide, let's call DI6 Run and DI7 Run Prohibit. Now for this program, we're going to use an AND block, so that's going to be under the Digital Functions. Just drag the AND block onto your screen. So the customer wanted the drive to only run if terminal S6 is closed and F7 is open. So that means we'll just run digital input 6 straight into the top input of the AND block, but we want this run prohibit to be the opposite. So we're actually going to put a NOT gate between the DI7 block and the lower AND block input. So if that one is not closed and digital input is closed, it'll run the drive. The last thing we'll have to do is go to the Drive Command tab, and this is for our drive run. So we'll pick out a forward run and wire that up to the output of the AND block. Now if you ever want to do some housekeeping, all you have to do is highlight the blocks, and if you click this little arrangement button here, it'll horizontally align the boxes. So you could kind of clean up the program and make it look nice. And another little trick you can do is there's a text tool up here, so you could add text anywhere you want in the program. So let's just call this our run sequence. Just a kind of ease of use for the program. It'll make more sense if anybody ever has to look at it. So the next bullet point for this exercise was two analog inputs added together. AI1 and AI2 are going to add together and become our frequency reference. So I'm just going to make more room by dragging and highlighting all this. And I can move this up to the top to make room for our frequency reference stuff. So I'll need a frequency command, and that actually will be the output telling the drive how fast to run. We're going to add our analog inputs together. So for that, you can take a wild guess, and yeah, we're going to use an add block. So under the numeric function, there's an add block I will drag out onto here. I'm kind of building this backwards by starting from the output. Go to the drive I.O. We said we wanted AI1 and AI2. Make these connections here. You could highlight the stuff and arrange them vertically and horizontally to make them look nice. And just for continuity, I'm going to add text to this to say this is our frequency reference. So that's it. It's just a very simple program. So the next thing we have to do is compile, connect to the drive, and then download the project into the drive. So to do that, you will go up to Tools. If you click Compile, it'll just compile. And there you go. It compiled right away. Now to download, you've got to make sure you're properly set up for the drive's connection. To double check your connection settings, just select the connection setting button. I'm actually going to set it to serial USB because I'm physically connected via USB to the drive. Click save and close. Before we can download, we need to connect to the drive using the top connect button. Then we can select the download button on the lower toolbar. If there is a different program detected that is already loaded on the drive, we will have to choose to overwrite the old program. Okay, so we just compiled and downloaded the project file to the remote drive setup. I'm going to use the virtual I.O. and the monitoring function in DriveWorks EZ to verify the program is working correctly. I can see that the drive will only run if terminal S6 is closed and S7, our run prohibit, is open, just as the customer requested. If I set A1 and A2 at 50% each, then they do add together, I have 100% or 60 Hz as my frequency reference. Great job. In the next video, we will look at another application and have you solve it all on your own. So be sure to stick around.